Hello everyone, I'm Jimmy Burnett. I'm the mayor of Swanee. I want to welcome you to Swanee United Methodist Church. The church has been here since 1910. Uh, it was originally chartered in the 1870s, around 1874. And I think it had about 34 charter members. Um, around um, in the late 18, early 1900s, the original building, which was down on Main Street, uh, was uh, destroyed by a storm. And then in 1910, they built a new church up here and opened up and uh, have been having church here ever since, uh, over 113 years now. <laughs> the Reverend Heacher Park, uh, he's been with us for a couple of years and I'll uh, turn it over to him to welcome you. Oh, hi, uh, my name is Hitchard Park. I'm the uh, pastor here at Swanee First United Methodist Church. And uh, welcome to our church. This is the place for uh, God's grace for all people. And uh, especially one thing that is, uh, I'm, I feel really proud is that this, our church is in Swanee, and which is for all people. So thank you for joining us and thank you for coming and welcome to Swanee and Swanee United Methodist Church. Our church is always open. We became a member in 1977, and at the time they were doing some renovations to the inside here, and they added the new lighting, carpet, worked on the floors, new uh, uh, pews, and since then, you know, we've been trying to maintain the property and keep it warm and welcoming. The church was originally Swanee American Episcopal Church. Let me back up. It was the Methodist Episcopal Church. And then uh, through the history, things changed and it became Swanee United Methodist when it was um, in 68, when they joined all the Methodist churches together. We have about uh, 160 to 200 members on our rolls. There's, last Sunday we had 40 in attendance for our morning worship. Uh, and uh, so as you're driving around and about and would like to join us on a Sunday morning, please do so and come by and visit. I've been here at the church, like I said earlier, since 1977. And during that time, I've served on many committees and different different uh, positions within the church. I've been on the trustees, chairman of the trustees, building, they put me on buildings and grounds when we first came because we were looking to renovate the parsonage for our new pastor coming in, David Nagley, at the time. and. Uh, so I was in charge of helping getting that done. Later on, I helped build a parsonage and do some repair work. But uh, then I became a member of the trustees, served on there for a number of years, I served in different positions, chair, uh, chair of the administrative council. I now serve as chair of the administrative council and I am the lay leader, which means I am the lay delegate to the annual conference every year, North Georgia annual conference. And um, I've been serving on that role for the last three years or four years. Or or so maybe longer than that. The reason the church moved up on the hill here was there was a storm in the uh, late 1800s, early 1900s that, that uh, destroyed this, uh, the um, church down by the tracks. And they decided instead of rebuilding the church there because the train would stop there for water, that they would uh, um, move it up here on the hill so the service would not be disrupted. They uh, So they moved up here and built the church in, 1910 I guess it is when it was opened and um, the style of the church is very similar to many other churches that were built around the early 1900s late 1800s and as I was saying earlier that I saw a church in I think it was West Virginia as we were traveling one time that was very similar we stopped and looked at it and it was very very close to this same style uh, and if you look around in the countries around the as you're traveling you'll see many of them that have the very similar shape and form with the bell tower steps, uh, you know, narrow, wide uh, opening with the front porch and uh, it's, it's very common, common tile. Not an architect, so I can't give you the, uh, whether it's uh, a, a folk Victorian or a, a farm Victorian or whatever the style is, but uh, uh, it's very common to the, around the early 1900s. Early in the years, uh, Swanee was kind of a small town and a small city. Uh, and, uh, you know, we had the, basically the Baptist Church and the Methodist Church. Well, both were on circuits. So that meant they would, one would have a writer, a church, a preacher to come one Sunday, and then the next Sunday it would be another preacher because they didn't have enough to have 
the Methodist preacher to come every Sunday or the Baptist preacher to come every Sunday. So they alternated. Uh, when the ba Methodist preacher showed up, everybody came to the same church. When the Baptist preacher showed up, everybody went to the Baptist church. So that way through the years did they, uh, uh, the way they worship here in Swanee. It was more of a communal church. Uh, you know, it's amazing that it didn't stick. <laughs> Might've been a new concept there. Uh, so, uh, but over the years, uh, you know, the, each grew in their different directions. And as, as the Methodist church uh, here in Swanee, uh, it's state established, uh, went through a series of, uh, I guess an evolution from, uh, you know, the circuit days through the point in the early 60s, late 50s and 60s, that they had uh, student pastors that would come from Emory. Uh, the, the parsonage was built in 1950, so they would offer student pastors a place to live, and, uh, and all they had to do was preach on Sundays. And then later on, it became a full charge. David Nagley, I think, was our full appointed pastor here in 1978, uh, when we, we uh, right after we started coming here. And then since then, it's been a full, full charge, I think is what it's called. Another quick thing is the cemetery next door, a little bit of history here. That belonged to the city, that property did, and it used to be the Pauper Cemetery, is one of the rumors I've heard over the years. Sounds pretty good, so we'll go with it. Uh, and the city owned the pra uh, property. And in fact, I remember uh, um, a lady was killed in a car accident, and she needed a place, so they, uh, I remember hearing my parents talk that they called the city and they gave her a gravesite here. So, and later on, George Pierce, he had some land. I think it's the land where the police department is located now and the city owned this property. And he told the city that if you'll give the cemetery to the church, I'll deed the property to you. So this became the cemetery for the church uh, or the church's cemetery, probably in the seventies, somewhere in that neighborhood. There's um, quite a few, um, old graves down there, uh, but uh, that's one of the kind of uh, significant um, pieces of the property up here. There is a memorial marker there for one Revolutionary War person and uh, one of the few rare places. An exciting thing happened one Sunday, I walked out and I saw somebody standing here and as I was talking to him, he was out looking for the marker. He said he had a, a relative that was buried here or a memorial marker here honoring his a member of his family and it was the revolutionary war marker and i said come i'll show you where it's at and he i think he was part of the brogdon family and that was the family there that, that he was recognized he said the real grave is in tennessee somewhere that was kind of a neat fact that uh, always uh, uh, i've been impressed with over the years <laughs>